salute to hoops guys welcome back another day another video today is gonna be a little bit of a different video as you can see I got the computer set up here uh, I'm not breaking any packs or, or ripping anything today I know that's a little disheartening to some but I promise it's gonna be a good video um, not to mention I'm gonna have a break video for you guys over the weekend anyways and it's gonna be a really good one too big break uh, before we get into the video like subscribe uh, tell your friends what's going on here big hits so on and so forth I did it a 500 follower giveaway um, this past week over my Instagram and it was pretty successful it gave me a couple followers on here sorry subscribers so I'm hoping we can keep that that trend going because this is really fun so yeah just tell your friends what's going on here and let's get into it so a little bit of an educational video today um, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys. So I'm going to try to not make it too long of a video. But like I said, these are just guys that I myself am investing in and guys that I've kind of been hoarding over the past couple months or so. And two of the guys that I just started getting into. Um, so without further ado, let's kind of get into it. So the first guy in the list, uh, these are the guys I'm going to go be going over are going to be from this year's draft class. Um, we obviously know that John Morant and Zion are the top guys to invest in. Uh, they're not going to be on this list because they're kind of a given. So the first guy, these are all in no particular order, but the first guy is going to be Cam Reddish. And these are just guys that, like I said, I've been collecting over the past few months or so. Um, and the, the cards I'm going to be showing you are all base cards uh, on eBay. Uh, the base cards are going to be fairly cheap, and they're all going to be mosaic cards too, by the way. Um, but obviously, things get a little more expensive when you're talking inserts and color and stuff like that. So, uh, for the most part, the base cards are going to be all below like five bucks. Uh, but obviously, get more expensive as you get the color and the numbers and so on and so forth. So, Cam Reddish was obviously high draft pick this year. Um, in the background, I got the top 10 rookies so far for this year. <sighs> 1 through 10 here. Uh, and as you can see, Cam Reddish ranks at number 10. Okay, so uh, the reason why I'm investing in him is because obviously he was a great player at Duke. Uh, did well with Zion, so on and so forth. Kind of stumble. He was kind of struggling this year in the beginning of the season. Uh, he did show flashes of what he could do, though. On the court, I think um, Cam Reddish's major problem is that he's on the Hawks, and that's no dig at the Hawks, but they're not that that great of a team. They do have a young team; they got Trey Young and stuff like that. Um, but he was sharing; he's, he plays the two, the one, two, and the three, and those were all positions that were already taken. You got Trey at the one, and they were running Kevin Huerter at the two, and then I believe DeAndre Hunter was number three. So, in my opinion, the reason why Cam didn't have such a great year. As you can see, he averaged 10 points per game, uh, just under four rebounds, and then one, one and a half assists. As I think the main reason why he didn't kind of break out like people thought he was going to was because he's kind of stuck in a kind of an awkward position because they already have uh, essentially their one, two, and three already set. So, um, but I think that if Cam can get more playing time and show that he is that player at Duke, that uh, his cards are going to shoot up uh, even more than what they already are. He's obviously, a lot of these rookies right now are living in the shadow of Zion and Jaw too because they came out, you know, guns blazing. So, but like I said, I think that is his major problem. So that's why I've been getting his cards for pretty cheap. Um, like I said, the, these these base cards are you can probably get for two bucks. Um, but even his color cards are, are are fairly cheap as well on eBay. So, like I said, just one guy that I'm investing in here. Uh, another guy that I was investing in in the beginning when people were pretty much on the jaw in Zion train was Kobe White. Now, another reason why I was collecting Kobe White is because, number one, I'm a Bulls fan, but number two, the Bulls are going through a transitional period as if you're a Bulls fan you know that our front office was terrible for forever so they revamped the front office and I really think that getting a new front office getting some new players around Kobe 
and a new head coach it's actually going to make him thrive even more than what he already was as you can see he's number nine just before cam reddish here on the top 10 for this year averaging 13 points per game and then uh, 2.7 assists so uh, in my opinion if the bulls can make the changes necessary to actually get it you know better players around kobe i think those numbers are just going to go through the roof in my opinion uh, like i said these are just guys that i'm investing in so his base cards i was getting his base cards for super cheap um but they're actually going up up now um i think people have kind of kind of realized that kobe is going to be the few one of the future pieces of the bulls so uh base cards i, I believe are two-ish three-ish bucks um, but i was getting them for probably a dollar each at some point a few months ago so um obviously if you're landing if you're getting like you know getting into the colors uh his prices are, are pretty up there so but as far as base cards go still pretty cheap uh third guy we're gonna go over is gonna be rj barrett now rj barrett is not on the top 10 list of rookies for this year so far um but if you've seen him on the knicks he actually shows extremely uh good signs of defensive and offensive awareness he's a and he's a scorer i mean he's a natural scorer he's a scoring guard so um he plays in the knicks guys so that's no dig at knicks fans but i mean it's kind of enough said the knicks are kind of are a franchise that really hasn't been known to uh, <laughs> produce uh and I, I don't know when the last time they made the playoffs was but uh he's a guy that if you've seen him before like i said he's, he shows really good flashes of being a great player and i think that um i don't know if he's going to be a good player in the knicks his, whole, his entire career but uh, if he can be that number one guy at least on the knicks um then his prices are going to go through the roof they're already uh as far as any of these go any of the color cards are going to go for a lot of money but his base cards still fairly cheap and he's young i mean he's a good prospect in my opinion and if like i said if he can if he stays in the knicks for his entire career uh we'll see what happens they haven't been known to to you know make players better unfortunately but he's a in my opinion he's got the potential to be one of the one of the more solid point guards in the league now moving on we've got Rui Hashimura. Everyone needs a guy like Rui Hashimura on their team. As you can see, he's number six on the list. Uh, 13 points per game uh, with six rebounds. And he's stuck in another guy that's kind of stuck on a team that really isn't going anywhere. I mean, if you've followed basketball and followed the Wizards the past 10 years or so, their game plan has kind of been the exact same thing the last 10 years. So... I think that if the Wizards decide to move away from, to get away from the kind of the John Wall era, and I don't know if they need to start fresh or just kind of do a small rebuild, but Rui Hashimura is going to be a definite vital piece to their, to, to whatever they're doing. But in my opinion, I just don't think John Wall, I think John Wall should have left when he had the opportunity to. And I don't think that, I think his time is kind of up in, in Washington, in my opinion. I think they need to move on and get some younger guys guys in there and get the team revamped. But Rui Hashimura, guy that plays both ends of the court. And if you've been collecting Mosaic, you already know that Rui has, Rui's stuff is going up in price too. Um, but as far as base cards go, still fairly cheap on eBay and on uh, any other sites. So our last guy for this, for this year is going to be I say Bobo for last, guys. So, uh, I don't have any stats on him, all right, because he spent, I'm pretty sure, the, the entire year in the G League uh, playing with the Windy City Bulls. But if you've seen this guy play, I mean, for for being 7'2", 7'3", he's one of the more athletic guys on the court. He can put the ball on the court, plays defense, he can dribble, uh get to the basket and shoot and shoot the three which is 
obviously something that needs to be done in, in today's NBA. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I watched the video of him. I, I take these things lightly, obviously, but uh, of him doing like a practice run or whatever it, against some other guys. And in my opinion, he was looking, I don't wanna make any bold comparisons, but he was definitely looking like a, uh, like a, like a younger, taller Kevin Durant on the court especially with the way he's able to move and put the ball on the court and things like that. So, like I said, I don't have any stats for him. And he's, I mean, super cheap as far as base cards go. Even on, even his colored stuff or his numbered stuff uh, isn't really going for too high. Um, I think an autograph, I saw an autograph go for like 33 bucks of his. So he's definitely super low key and low risk, high reward. So, which is why I've been hoarding him because he's so, so cheap at the moment. So moving on, we're gonna go back to last year's draft class. I got two guys to go over with you and I promise it won't take too long. So let's hit our internet browser here. All right, so the first guy that I'm gonna talk to you guys about that I started uh, kind of investing in and stuff like that is gonna be this guy right here, Dante DiVincenzo plays for the uh the bucks if you guys don't know and he's he's doing great in my opinion so if you've ever seen i live here in milwaukee so i've seen dante play before and this is another guy that can play both ends of the court play shooting guard he's a big shooting guard um as far as uh, height goes i think he's around he's not too big um but He's, he's definitely a strong shooter, or stronger guy, I should say. So, um, in my opinion, so his his rookie cards are actually going for maybe four or five bucks now, depending on uh, as far as prism and optic goes. So, they're, I mean, his price is obviously rising. Now, one reason why I think it's going to rise even more is because, oh, excuse me, uh, the bucks are obviously going to make a playoff run. And Dante is, in my opinion, like I said, these are just my opinions, but I think he's going to play a vital role in their playoff run um, with the way he shoots the ball and is able to... He's like a 3 and D type of guy. So I think this is going to be probably an X factor for, like I said, the Bucks, the Bucks playoff run. Last guy we're going to talk about here is also from the 2018-2019 draft class. And that's uh, Devontae Graham. Boom. Oh, that's my dog barking. Excuse me. Now, Devontae uh, plays for the Charlotte Hornets. Um, if you saw him play last year, didn't get much playing time. We can scroll down here. Uh, last season, he only got 14 minutes per game. Uh, and that could be due to Kemba Walker. But... Uh, he won most improved, as you can see. He was averaging four, almost five points per game last year. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, but that quickly jumped up to 18.2 points per game. And uh, which made it, which I believe, uh, like I said, he won uh, most improved player. Now he's only six foot one uh, at point guard, but uh, Charlotte is obviously a younger team. Uh, they're getting some pieces around, kind of kind of built together. They got PJ Washington who's definitely a great uh, at the center, power forward center position. And I think, in my opinion, Devontae Graham is going to be uh, the future of their team at the point guard spot. Now, this guy can definitely shoot the three uh, and run the point for sure. But at 6'1", he's definitely shorter than a lot of other point guards. So it's kind of iffy there. But um, when you're talking about investing in the future, I think that he's going to be at least the point guard uh, for the Hornets at least um, for the time being just because um, of his improvement the guy's got great work ethic so on and so forth uh, that's just like I said my opinion but from what I've seen uh, Devontae is going to be a, a pretty great great player his prices on eBay as far as cards go are pretty are getting I mean they're they're rising too um, his optic basketball cards um, I got these on a steal, a few of them on a steal for on an eBay, uh, excuse me, an eBay um, auction. But just like a buy it outright price is they're going for like five bucks the base ones anyway, and uh, any color stuff of his is getting pretty up there too. So 
there we go guys uh, that's seven players that I'm currently investing in um, you don't have to take my advice this is just like I said guys that I really like and think that they have a future in this league so that concludes that and uh, as I mentioned earlier look out for a new video this weekend I'm doing a huge break uh, because I found some some good stuff this uh, this past couple days at the store so uh, that'll be it for me guys go ahead and like subscribe and if you guys have any questions about who, who else I'm investing in you can always comment or uh, hit me up on Instagram at salute the hoops uh, and then I have one more thing to tell you guys but I forgot it <laughs> so I'll I'll address it in the next video if I remember it couldn't have been too important but I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you guys on salute Saturday take it easy